In this session, we'll be discussing linear equations and their representation in the form of matrices. We've already discussed that it is possible for us to represent all linear equations in the form of matrices. That's a very useful tool in itself. And later down the line, we'll understand why is it so very useful. But just for now, let's start digging into how you can represent a linear equation in the form of matrices. And then having done that, how you can find different solutions to the equations okay so let's start with a generic equation ax equals p let us assume the first case being when a is not equal to zero that means x is p over a because we're trying to find the value for x which is only a single solution now let us take a second case in which we have a equals zero then we have two possibilities here either we have p which is equal to zero or we have p which is not equal to zero it's quite evident if p is not equal to 0 then the system has no solution because that's a hypothetical case and when p equals 0 then the system has infinitely many solutions. Just a quick note here, the slide is started with a very important equation ax equals p. This is because later down this, this session we'll understand that a can be a matrix in itself, x will be a matrix in itself and so will be b a matrix itself. So any set of linear equations we can we should be able to put them down in the form of ax equals b and so having to remember this this relation is important later down the line okay let's move forward now we have a linear system of equation ax plus by which equals c here we have two coefficients a and b two variables x and y and one constant c we are also defining that a and b should not be equal to zero and we have two variables x and y which is an r square plane. Why? Because we have two unknown variables and we have a two-dimensional plane with coordinates x and y, so it's a r square plane. Okay, so let's remove the fancy terminology from here and put this in the form of an equation. It can, for instance, let's take an example, 2x plus 4y equals, let's say, 8. So this is pretty much what this line states. We have 2 as a, 4 as b, x and y are the two variables and 8 is the constant in this case and a comma b which is 2 comma 4 is not equivalent to 0 comma 0. So this is pretty much a linear equation correct. Now let us consider points of intersections of two lines. So these are just two line equations we can take anything and the condition against all the four uh, what do I say four coefficients and two constants are that a1 b1 a2 b2 shouldn't be equal to 0 comma 0. So this is the condition okay. Let's see what happens now. Okay, so for unique solution, let's write equations real quick. We have, let's say, 2x plus 4y equals 8 and 3x plus 5y equals, say, 20. I can write this equation in the form of a matrix, something like this, 2, 4. We've already discussed that in previous sessions. This is 3, 5, and this will be 20, correct? So this one is A1, this one is B1, this one is C1, this one's A2, this one's B2, and this one's C2. So for unique solution, the condition is a1, b2 minus a2, b1 should not be equal to 0. So this multiplied by this, I mean 2 multiplied by 5 minus 4 multiplied by 3 should be equal to 0. And if that is true, then it has a unique solution. So right here you can understand how important it is to understand matrices because we, we, we had two straight linear equations we just put them together as a matrices and then using just a basic relationship we can identify if these equations will have unique solutions or not we've already discussed another way using the gradient method to find out unique solution infinitely many solutions or no solutions but representing them in the form of matrices personally according to my opinion is a better way because when it comes to programming you're supposed to derive functions let's say if you're designing any new model to make some predictions and you have a differentiated function that you have created so even to understand or picturize what kind of a graph it should have in first place first domain second domain third domain okay i'm getting a little complex here 
with the explanation but let's cut the crap for now and get to the point and say that linear equations when represented in the form of matrices can help us envision uh, can help us envision the graphs really fast instantaneously and i will explain how down the line so that's why representing linear equations in the form of matrices will always come handy second important advantage is because now these are all parameters two dimensional parameters in two dimensional plane so if you have multiple data sets like let's say 3 4 5 6 dimensions and then you need to quickly visualize the situations and scenarios if you have the matrix form of representation it becomes a little faster to hold the values and then do computations because if you talk about python you have numpy holding the values in the form of matrices if you talk any other programming language java you'll have arrays to hold the matrices values to some extent then be it any programming language is holding an array is much simpler and then performing a computational analysis becomes faster with respect to memory so mathematically also it's efficient and then with any programming language also it is so just keep that in mind now let's take this example we have x minus y equals 3 to x plus 3y equals 11 so a1 b2 if i was to make the matrix out of this one this becomes 1 minus 1 this is 3 this is 2 this is 3 this is 11 now the condition is a1 b2 so 1 multiplied by 3 minus 2 multiplied by minus 1 the total is 5 it's a positive number and hence it's not equivalent to 0 and hence this has a unique solution so right away we figured it out so now for no solution the condition is a1 b2 minus a2 b1 should be equal to 0 however a1 c2 minus a2 c1 should not be equivalent to 0 so these are the two equations let's put them down together in the form of matrices this one will be 1 2 Sorry, it is not very visible, but I'm running out of space. This is two four. This is one three, and then let's plug in the value real quick. A one b two four minus four. This is equivalent to zero. It it satisfies the first condition. Let's check for the second one. A one c two one multiplied by three minus two multiplied by one. It's not equivalent to zero. This equation is also satisfied. So this, so so this, so these two equations do not have any solutions. so they represent a set of parallel lines because they do not intersect anywhere the third case is infinite number of solutions and that happens when a1 b2 minus a2 b1 equals 0 and a1 c2 minus a2 c1 also equals to 0 how do you remember so many conditions it's very simple so for unique solution a1 b2 minus a2 b1 should not be equal to 0 for no solution the first the first validation needs to be equal to 0 but the second one shouldn't and for infinitely many solutions both of them should be equal to 0 let's take the example here i'll represent this in the form of matrix again 1 2 1 this is quite evident 2 4 2 is supposed to multiply this by this 1 multiplied 4 minus 2 multiplied 2 4 which is 0 then you take 1 multiplied by 2 minus 2 multiplied by 1 which is again 0 so these two equations are satisfied and hence these two equations have infinite number of solutions some important point of considerations that you should keep in mind and also they are again very obvious in nature so if we have a linear equation in the form of ax plus by equals c and if a comma b equals 0 comma 0 and c is not equivalent to 0 then obviously ax plus by equals c has no solution because this is a hypothetical situation again correct and then if a b c they are all equivalent to 0 so then this has infinite number of solutions in the r square plane why the r square because we have two variables x and y so we are on x and y dimensional plane that's why r square but later down in programming languages artificial intelligence systems we'll have r with a very high dimensionality and we will be discussing all the maths connected with those situations but for now we have r square because this is x and y plane okay so the interesting and the fun part from where the slide started seems like we are going to be ending it there so now we have quite a few lot of equations m n set of equations with constants b1 b2 until bm now this specific linear set of uh, set of linear equations sorry can be represented in the form of matrices something like this we have all the coefficients here in matrix a 
we have all the variables under x and we have all the value constants under b and so so this can be represented again as ax equals b and this should right away ring ring the ring the idea that we started a slide with the equation ax equals b and we were validating for the values of we were trying to figure out the value of x when a equaled 0 and when b wasn't 0 and when b equals 0 remember so this is the significance that any set of linear equations can be represented in the form of matrix a x and b and then we can perform computations and operations on them depending upon the solution set we discussed in slide one okay so A is called as a coefficient matrix, A, B together is called as augmented matrix. If B has all the values equivalent to zero, it's called as a homogeneous or else it is called as non-homogeneous. So that's pretty much it that you should know when we're discussing linear equations and their representation in matrices. If something is not clear, just feel free to get in touch and I hope this made perfect sense because this is important. We've discussed two important ways of finding out solutions to linear equations. One was through gradient slopes and the other one's been through matrices representation. Personally, I find matrices representation very important and useful, but we can never undermine the importance of gradient because gradient and slopes are handy tools as well when it comes to mathematics. So thank you once again and that's pretty much it for this session. Thank you.